Welcome to our January 2023 school board meeting for the school district of the city of York. At this time, Madam Secretary, may we have the roll call? Director Glover Brown. Here. Director Orr. Director Wilkes. Director, Here. <laughs> Director Thompson. Here. Director Alexander. Director Liggins. Present. Director Leonard. Here. Vice President Kennedy. Here. President Breland. Here. At this time, we'll have a moment of silent reflection followed by the pledge of the flag. Flag to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic in which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I'll ask for the approval of the December 14, 2022 minutes. So moved. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And before we move forward, I just wanted to mention that the board was in executive session yesterday, January 17, 2023, to discuss to discuss quasi judicial and privileged legal matters with legal counsel. So at this time, we'll begin with our presentations. And whenever we have children, I'm going to put the children first. We'll do our family presentation and then we'll move forward with our following agenda. All right, good evening. All right, my name is Kiwan Felder and I'm the principal of McKinley K-8. to To my left is Ms. Ashley White, the assistant principal. And today we're gonna to be honoring our family. Thank you. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Blakely, and their children, Iran, Ariane, and Orion, who are both in eighth grade, and Arida, who is in third grade. All three are honorable students. Each exemplify all aspects of our PRIDE acronym. Iran and Ariane have attended McKinley for the entirety of their K through eight experiences thus far. Furthermore, not only are Mr. and Mrs. Blakely dedicated to the success of their children, but they are supporters of McKinley, giving their time to attend school events, providing valuable feedback and suggestions to improve, to improve the experiences of students and parents at McKinley. Please help us in honoring the Blakely family. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say some words? Go ahead. You got something to say. Okay. okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, very short speech. Uh, my wife and I would like to thank uh, McKinley Elementary and slash middle school for this award and our children. Uh, thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Blakely, before you leave, thank you very much thank for you. choosing York City School District as your school of choice for your children. We're pleased that you are pleased with the education that your children are receiving, and we just hope that you have continued success. Thank you. Yes. Sure. Thank you again. <laughs> I need you to focus on. 
At this time, what I would like to do is I would just like to bring the accountant forward to discuss our audit and get that out of the way because our conversation with the school may get lengthy and I'll... Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Mrs. Kim Stank. Um, she, uh, years ago, she was our one of our lead auditors and now I believe you are a partner in the firm. So um, I asked her to come forward because I know there were some concerns about wording in the uh, governance letter. So she has uh, been gracious to come and answer any questions or concerns that you have. Thank you. Hi, thanks for having me. And I would like to kind of detour a little bit and say, Sean has been just an awesome asset. We've seen him grow through the years. And as Sean said, I have been from doing your audit through reviewing your audit and now from overseeing your audit. And what a great addition, a new position for him. So we thank him for all that he's done. And Miss Stank, I, I thank you for the phone call. Sure. And you did answer the questions for me, but I just felt that our board members needed to hear for themselves because they also have to make decisions in terms of information that comes in. So sure, absolutely. I think they should be privy to all the information that every other board sure. member Have has. you shared with them? No, because I knew you were okay. coming. <laughs> well, then I'll be happy to. So you received two things from us. One was the governance letter and the other one was the financial statements. So the governance letter, it changed a little bit this year. And the only reason that it changed was because somebody in some other place decided to add some accounting things and accounting language. And what it said was the one thing that's added. And there are other things that were added to your letter as well, but I they understand the thing of concern was there was a paragraph that talked about risks. Every audit has a risk and there's risks of um, management override. So somebody could go in, make an override of it. And the other one is revenue recognition. So those two overrides are in every single audit, no matter if you're a government, if you're a manufacturing company, any kind of audit, those two risks exist even nonprofits. Um, the other risks that were identified, just because there are large numbers, are your pension and your OPEB and their related accounts around those. Now, what we do when we do our audit is we um, plan our audit around those risks and we do everything we can to mitigate those risks. We test controls, uh, we get your actuary reports. So those things are, are done to mitigate risk. If you would have any issues, you would get a finding. Um, we don't have any actually, and the other great thing about Sean is he worked to get rid of all your findings. Your single audit report is in draft form and it will be issued very shortly, um, but you actually got rid of all your findings. So no findings this year. So great news. Um, but do you have any other questions? Go ahead. You want to? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for the, for the explanation. And I appreciate the phone call, the attempted phone call you made to me as well. Um, the corrected and um, just the explanation you gave around the significant risk because I was one of the ones who had questions about and it's the wording of the paragraph that that lends itself to think that it's something more than than what you're describing to us and so we just wanted verification and unfortunately it's from the AICPA it's standard wording and we as a firm really struggled with it too, because the first letter, same thing that went out, the same, a board came back and said, what can you do? And we, we struggled and we said, we can't really deviate from what the, AIC, the AICPA is telling us. So, and, and I appreciate that because in, in for lay people, when we're reading and it says significant risk identified, right. and then we read down through the paragraph, and then it says we designed our audit to procedures to mitigate the risk. Right. And, and it has the words the fraud word. in there and errors yes. in there right. and oh, it just, we didn't like that, the wording at all, but then it came back to what do we do about it? We, yeah. So, so well, we were all on it because it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I apologize. I should have warned Sean ahead of time. So he could have warned you guys. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Do you, well, and, and look I don't at have any additional questions. And so I'll flip to your financial statement. So actually your financial statements, um, so great things happened and especially with your pension and OPEB, uh, OPEB obligation. So entity-wide, you had increases as well as um, on your fund level, you also had increases. So your net, net position increased in both. So overall, great year. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other I questions? I just wanted the board to be made aware. Yeah. And if you guys ever have questions, please never hesitate to reach out to us. You know, Sean has our contact information and we are always open to have discussions. I, as soon as I heard you guys were upset, I'm like, let me get on the phone. Well, let me, so. let me, let me 
recharacterize that. We weren't upset. We were concerned because of the language and what the language was specifying as opposed to, sure. it was not clear. No. It led us to believe that these were significant risks and that's why we wanted to have conversations with you. Yes. So, very good. All right, and again, if you need anything, just reach out. Thank you, mm -hmm. you, Thank you all. And at this time, we will call back to the podium, Mr. Felder and the McKinley presentation. I right, thank you again. Okay, we are McKinley Pre K to eight. As I said before, my name is uh, Kiwan Felder. I'm the principal, and this is Miss Ashley White, assistant principal. Next slide, please. On well, the next slide, you'll see our purpose statement, which reads as follows: The McKinley Pre K to eight family will commit to creating a safe learning environment for all stakeholders where critical thinking skills and integrity can be cultivated and applied in school, at home, and in the community. And below that, we have our mantra, which is, it takes everybody every day to make McKinley a magical place. To the right of that, you have demographic information, and it is as follows. Next, please. So school-wide critical thinking is our big rock for this year. And the idea came about, um, I was at UVA last year and I was doing a reflective exercise and I started thinking about student success and how what we could give to kids so that they, that they can apply universally across their lives, whether it be at home, whether it be at school and as adults. And so I started to think like, what, what, got, what was it that got me in front, got me to the place where I am today, which is in front of you? What were some of the things that my teachers did? What were some of the things that life taught me? And so in, in sort of reviewing what my life, like how my life had kind of come to fruition, um, I started to understand that like a lot of what I was being taught was how to think. And if, if my teachers, I guess, believe that like, I knew how to think critically, I could actually transfer that to every, any aspect of my life to find success. And so what we, what we, we decided to do this year. So essentially I, I shared that story with the team. And I said, listen, I, you know, this is kind of, I am these kids. There, there's no difference in sort of what I grew up in and what I know versus what they're growing up in and what they know. And the only difference is maybe town, right? So we then started to talk about it. And the decision was made by the team to just embrace what's called critical thinking. We're going to teach students how to think critically. And so we look at it as a universal transferable skill because all students need it and it can be applied across the board so that you can find success in every aspect of your life. Of your life. So before we could do that, we had to come up with a definition, something that was easy to understand that everyone could have access to. So it's critical thinking is being able to process information and apply it to your life, simply put. And what we did was we also made it accessible to all of the, all of the students that represent the languages spoken in our school so that everyone could have a universal understanding of what it means to do that. Uh, below that, you see the, act, the text that we actually are using to guide um, our, our journey on this critical thinking. Um, adventure. Adventure, that's what it basically is, yeah. And so and what you also see is be below that to the right, you see what is called a two-week goal plan. And a two-week goal plan is essentially, you know, we ask teachers to look at what are, what are some of the things that you want to actually figure out you know, to do and apply in your classrooms as, re as it relates to critical thinking. And so that goal sheet is actually aligned to our Danielson domains, 3B and 3C, um, which we also use in the top right, if you look in the top uh, right area, we use as our, our critical thinking walkthrough look for us. So everything is aligned. A lot of this stuff we just kind of created and it was inspired by some of the things that, that existed and then some of the things that we just wanted to do. Below that, you'll see um, representations of what like we did a professional development, which was a make and take. And so to, to, to support our teachers in taking this and stepping out and taking this journey on critical thinking, we provided resources. We could actually develop your own, or we had some that were pre-made. We had laminators there. We had different things there just to inspire different ideas that could be applied in the classroom. And then to the right of that, we have our critical thinking shout outs, um, which we use to praise folks. Before you move on, Mr. Felder, yes. you must be reading my mind. Sure. Because last week I asked a question in terms of the thinking process and how are we engaging in, in students in the classroom mm -hmm. and having them become more responsive to their learning mm -hmm. and their responsibility to their learning. Yes. So, mm -hmm. 
that answers some of the questions I was asking last week. Oh, thank you. Glad we could do that. Um, next, on the next slide, please. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so next you see under family, student, and support, family and student supports, um, our uh, student attendance is 88%, chronic absenteeism, 44%, Suspensions uh, total is 107 and expulsions are 10. And below that, you see some of our family and community outreach points of pride. We will address a lot of this, this information as we proceed on in the presentation. So the slide that you just saw contains a lot of numbers and numbers often don't tell a story. So like Mr. Felder said, a lot of what we're going to go through next is to give you a little more context around some of those numbers. So our suspension numbers we know were high, but we what we did was we disaggregated that data over the, the last few months. So you can see that September and October were our peak months for when we were issuing out of school suspensions, but that was because we truly took a, a team effort to change the culture of the building and really provide that safe learning environment for all students. And we trended downward over time. You'll also see in the supplemental information in your folder, um, one of the things that we've also counteracted is our ratio to those suspensions. So you have a sheet in there that you'll see it's the third graph on the bottom um, that shows that as an alternative to suspension, we have started doing a lot of other things because we've been able to better connect with our students and provide a lot of conversations, a lot of background for their experience and issue logical consequences that truly make sense and make a difference in students' behavior. So the next few slides, um, which you have in front of you, so we won't highlight a lot, um, but just go over the supports across all three tiers that are also backed up by our student services team at our building. Can I ask a question? Yes, you may. So what other type of alternative consequences were actually given out? So we actually looked into that. 80% of our discipline comes from alternatives to suspension. When we um, ran that risk ratio, we're only we're we are only issuing suspension 20% of the time at this point in the school year. The majority of the other alternative actions and consequences that we typically give, um, a lot of conversations with the students, restorative practices, mediations, contacting families, and we also do a lot of community service because we help the students understand that when you come to us, there's learning that has been disrupted. You've disrupted your classroom, you've taken time from your teacher, time from the students, so you need to give that time back in a productive manner while also understanding what you've done, what you should have been doing, what we can change, and what we're going to do next time. You're welcome. And just to follow up to that, sure. once you have done that with the student, what are you look? What are your outcomes looking like in terms of that child's behavior and how they're thinking about their actions in the classroom? Sure. Yeah. So, what the community service does is it actually provides an opp an opportunity for students to connect with the person in which they're doing the community service. So, if it is our like our uh, plant manager or some of the other custodians, they connect with them because if a student, let's say, they decide to to trash the cafeteria, we're going to work with the with some of our custodians and our plant managers to get you know to get that done. And what it does is it builds the relationship. It actually starts to 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 pull together this whole feeling of community. Um, some of the other things that they do is they have to clean the outside area. You got to clean the playground. We're going to start moving into some of the neighborhoods because they drive trash coming from coming coming from the corner store in the morning. So what we're trying to do is is really just connect, use it as a piece to connect with our families and our students. We haven't got one one parent that came back and said, "No, my student is not doing community service, or my child's not doing community service." Usually they're very much for it. No, they they usually the responses that we get was, "Yeah, they need to learn how to clean, so they can come and help me clean this house." <laughs> like that's usually. That's usually what it is. And so the student, you know, they end up giving back and, you know, we'll have a conversation with them at the end of it. And it always ends up being something positive. So that has really helped to curb behaviors. It's really just about connecting. So I would like to see at the end of the year. Sure. Those numbers and how that really changed mm -hmm. behavior. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. You're just highlighting that here. So next we have our family and students, family and student supports. I don't want to, you know, go down every bullet point, but we are providing services to support our families and also our students. Um, and it, they've been uh, they've been effective thus far. Next on page seven, you see family and student reports as it relates to the guidance counselor and some of the uh, services and things. Yes. 
and some of the actually opportunities and services and experiences that um, are being afforded students as well. Next slide. So in, re in regards to discipline, a lot of what we refer to is our tier one universal support and system, which is PBIS, um, which is near and dear to my heart, if you know anything about me. So on the left side of the page, you see um, our fidelity scores. So this year we're using the benchmarks of quality, which is a more comprehensive fidelity measure that looks at the things of the system of PBS and whether PBIS and whether or not they are in place or not. And then the team can make decisions based on what we do need to put in place and what we already have. Um, my goal and some of our staff sitting behind us can tell you on day one when they met me, I presented to them and told them this, this is something that matters. We know it works. It's very important to me. And my goal is to get us the, the baseline is 70% to be um, considered implementing PBIS with fidelity. I said, that's not good enough. So we're going to go for 90. And so when the team did our benchmarks of quality score as a team, our average right now is 91% for the fall. Um, so detailing that, you can see previous scores from the building. And then to the right, um, we also are supporting the, the district's um, expectation of using live school to recognize, reinforce, and reward students for their positive behavior. So just some comparative data again last year to this year. What the percentages are is the monthly staff usage of live school. 90% is the fidelity target. So August, we just kind of gave the teachers to get back into the swing of things, find ways that works for them to be able to give those live school points. But other than that, we've maintained our 90%. In addition, we also make sure that we provide students with their reward. So not only do we do extrinsic things, but we're also trying to motivate them intrinsically. So it's really like a me versus me. It's not, I do something well, and I know I get a sticker. I know I get a prize. It's really, what can I do that makes a difference for me so that I feel good about my actions and my behaviors and knowing that, again, it came from me. So we recognize and we reward our students with different prizes and things that are extrinsic, but we also provide them with events that they can attend so that we honor and celebrate their behaviors. And we are just um, in the beginning phases of starting a seventh and eighth grade video game club, which will be based on behavior. Again, so students know that there will be certain things that they have to follow to be able to get into and attend that club after school. Can I say something? You already knew. You already knew. It was already a thing. I know what he's going to say. It was already a thing. <laughs> um, if there's any assistance that you need when it comes to the video game club, please let me know. Um, we have some connections that will allow to help yep. uh, establish. Ms. Game. Washington is going to actually be the one yeah, who's we running it. So. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll yeah. talk. We'll talk. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks. Thank awesome. you. Thank we we actually want to talk esports. Oh, I got you. In the future, too. <laughs> Thank you very much. I got you. Plug. Yep. This is a plug. <laughs> Shameless. All right. Next slide, please. Okay, on the left, you see transition team. So uh, Ms. Rivera of the Freshman Academy and myself have decided to come together and form what's called a transition team. And, and the goal of it is to essentially help our rising ninth graders transition by providing different experiences for them so that to increase the likelihood of their success when they come when they get to the high school. So my in my previous role, I was in charge of the freshman academy. I did a lot of transition work. And so what we're trying to do now is continue more transition work, build a transition system that helps all of our rising students find success. Um, and so that so that when you know they get to school, they know who they can lean on, they know where the resources are, they understand what the structure of the schedule is going to be, so on and so forth. So if you see uh, down below the bulleted points, I'm um, talking about, I mean, address some of the things that we've been talking about and some of the experiences that we want to provide for students in the coming months. And in addition to that, we just started a pilot program partnering again with the high school to provide opportunities for students that are interested in the teaching profession to give them a, a glimpse of kind of what that looks like. So our awesome kindergarten team has offered to welcome in those girls. Um, they were in last week for their kind of orientation to get a feel for things. Um, they will be rotating among our three kindergarten classrooms, but again, just to get a feel for what the profession is like and give them some experience that's real life helping out in our classrooms with our students. And, and I just want to remark on that real quick. And Dr. Fitch, this is a conversation that you had with me the other day in terms of the higher levels giving back. And those type of connections, I see my niece in one of these pictures. Yes. Because when she was 
helping with our special needs students at the high school and working with those teaching staff that build that desire in her mm -hmm. to want to come back to teach and be a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I like the fact that you're making those connections with our students because we can build our own. Absolutely. Good Thank on you. pipeline. That's right. Yep. All right. In addition to providing some ways that students, again, can build that intrinsic motivation and really be role models at our school and future leaders, I brought the Bearcat Ambassadors program that I started at Jackson to McKinley. So pictured there are our first five um, student ambassadors. They had to go through an application process and an interview process. Um, and basically, they get to be role models in the building. They have leadership opportunities around the school based on their desired job responsibilities that they chose. And then you also have our Bearcat Safety Patrol program, which was started by our communities and schools coordinator, Mr. Proctor. Next slide, please. All right, next we have Encore. So of course, music, physical education, and art. I just wanna say a couple of things. Last year, we held a series of events, but one was called the McKinley Night of Music. During the McKinley Night of Music, we had over 200 <laughs> students participate and more than 300 family members come out to just attend. And so what that did was that lit a fire um, in students for and a love for music education. And so what we did this year was we decided to change our teachers so wonderfully, um, decided to assist us in creating a music room. And um, we've been we've been put, getting that room together. Um, Ms. Thomas, our music teacher, is the one that's kind of been, has really sparked the love um, of music in students. And so we actually had six of our fifth graders this year uh, participate in the York County Elementary uh, Honors Chorus. And of course, they, you know, during the holidays, walked around and got and got to sing Christmas carols and things like that. Um, our art for as with regard to art, um, we have some of our student work displayed at Martin Library. And as far as physical education goes, we actually just had our first hip hop dance class yesterday. <laughs> so, and the kids really, really enjoyed it. So if you wanna, you know, come out and, and support us for our next McKinley Night of Music, it's happening on May 25th at 4.30. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> we have McKinley Beats and that's a new something. We can, we're not gonna tell you what it is right now, but it's gonna be awesome. Um, and then we have the U the Uctastic ukuleles and also the McKinley Singers. So please come out and join us and have a little fun. Next. Uh, so this year's Trunk or Treat was a smash. Um, we had, I, listen, okay, so I'll be oh. quite honest with you. So most of, half of Newberry and then all the way up the block on Kurtz was our line for Trunk or Treat. All right. And it was wonderful to see so many families come out. We thought we were going to run out of candy. We started giving some alternative things to candy that are a little healthier and kids still love that. So that was great. Um, but we just we had an amazing time. We even had livestock running around and go to chicken. Just kind of it was great. <laughs> like it was it was wonderful. Um, and so we hope to repeat that again next year. It was just it was super awesome. So. I'm sorry. We apologize. Listen, next time it happens, <laughs> you can you take my parking spot. <laughs> next slide, Jess. In addition to another family event that was very successful, um, we held a winter holiday shop in December on a Saturday. Um, to give credit to our amazing staff, over 30 of them either donated items or volunteered their time to be a part of this event. So kudos to them for coming out. You can see our awesome team of chefs that cooked our students and families breakfast. And the purpose of the holiday shop was to be able to provide gifts that were donated by us um, at super low cost to students so that they could be able to provide gifts for their families. And they were, I mean, some of them were carrying bins and I mean, they were so excited that they had a chance to be able to do that. So that was a very successful event that we hope to continue year after year. Okay, next slide. With regard to instruction, you can see we have 178 walkthroughs. We have no observations in progress. 35 are complete, and we are at a 90% completion rate thus far. Next is our PVAS data. We growth. We were growing, and that is a beautiful sight to see. Our teachers have done an amazing job preparing our students, and so we are growing. We are very happy about that. Next slide. 
On this slide, you'll see a number of different things related to our IXL data. At the top on your left is our overall school dashboard um, that highlights the skills that our students have mastered, where they're proficient, and what skills they're practicing. Below that speaks to the IXL effect. In your folder, you have um, a stable sheet that goes over some of our notes related to this instructional piece, that if you're unsure what the IXL effect is, there is something that speaks to that. But our students are hitting that mark, which basically says that because we are a district that uses IXL on the regular, our students tend to outperform other students on state exams and overall assessments that other schools would not. You also see our teacher engagement. So we expect that our teachers are using live, or live school. I love live school. Um, no, using IXL on a regular basis, meaning they're pulling at least one analytic report for three weeks consecutively. Um, it does say 76% there, but that is because there are teachers that are in our system that are not necessarily in our building. Um, so once we disaggregated that number, we're actually at 91% engaged use, which means our teachers are regularly looking at student data and having conversations with students, which we'll get into a little bit later. And also one of our amazing teachers that's in the crowd this evening, that's on our leadership team in the top right box, um, provided that as a schedule for the week um, so that other teachers can kind of structure out their days for IXL use that also helps the students know, okay, it's Monday, this is what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go in and work on my recommended skills. Or Tuesday and Thursday, my teacher's gonna recommend skills that I need to do. So I know that those are days when I'm gonna work on things specifically that I need. Me. Next slide. <clears throat> Next is our CDT data, and I'll just give you a caveat to this. You do have the actual data in your folder, just in case you would, did want to peek at it. However, because our testing windows were in late August and late November, it's not current data that our teachers are necessarily using just because we have other things in place that provide us more data in the current moment in time, such as IXL, which mirrors a lot of the standards that CDTs also measure on top of our interim and our common assessments. And so the CDTs will not be given at all the rest of the school year in preparation for the PSSAs and things like that. So to speak to that data and what decisions were made when those tests were given, again, you'll see that later on slide 21. Right next, what you are seeing is the most recent assessment data for mathematics um, common assessment, right? Moving on to the next slide, and we'll address some. We'll address some of what you saw on the next slide. <clears throat> All right. So some of, these are some of the data-driven decision making uh, things that we've done. Please take a look at that. And this, these are these are our efforts to address some of what you saw in the previous slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next slide, please. All right, as of now, teacher attendance is 82%. Uh, participation rates will be addressed in the next slide. And our number of new teachers is four. Next slide, please. And here are the, here are the teacher uh, assessment participation percentages. Um, our next ELA interim assessment window will open on 123 and the math interim uh, window closed on Friday the 13th. We'll get that data to you at a later time. All right, closing out, this is a list of the PDs that we've provided to staff. Um, in general, some things like PLC norms and structures at the beginning of the school year because we did have some new teams and new staff members. Of course, all of our critical thinking work. Um, we also provided training to teachers for Illuminate and looking at reviewing common assessments and then all of the topics under the equity work um, that we've we've done throughout the school year thus far. Next slide. <clears throat> and as far as teacher vacancies, as of now, we have no vacancies, but we'd like to thank, we'd like to thank, sincerely thank mm -hmm. Mrs. Rick uh, for her 35 years of service as she did retire mm -hmm. last Friday. Mm -hmm. She <laughs> is missed. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. Yes, I Absolutely. do. <laughs> First of all, thank you um, 
for your presentation tonight and thank you for the extra data to support um, some of the questions that, and I'm going to go through because I had some pre questions. And I think you probably answered some of them by adding the additional pieces in. But first, let me give you your, your kudos on some of the things that I saw that I really liked, which yes. were um, the number of social work meetings and the things that are occurring with the social workers and the conversations that are happening between teachers, um, students, and, and families. I can't thank you enough for, for that part that's happening. Um, I love the transition team piece. That's usually a question I always ask about what, how are we preparing our kids to transition mm -hmm. to the high school? Um, I love the building teachers, the, the building future teachers. Love it. Um, the community service piece was already said too that I really love. And then uh, I was really tickled to see your PVAS data and really um, surprised in a good way. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really happy to see that. Just a couple of my questions really stem around the um, your absentee rates and looking at that 44% um, that's chronically absent and how are we making connections to your parent liaison to mm -hmm. the connection to, to, to family and have we looked at, um, is there a specific grade that has like a higher rate of absenteeism than the other one and are there some common themes? That's three questions in one, but... Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. Okay, so in your folder, we we do have a sheet that speaks to that because we did pick apart that number as well. Um, so in there, we did look at um, one of one of the things that contributed to that is that a lot of our students at the beginning of the school year were being excluded for immunizations, and so we have a total of how many that was that contributes to that forty four percent. We're down to just one now. There's only one more student that needs to get it. And I just received updates from our nurse this morning as far as what was being done with mom. Um, there have been documented notes from our social worker, our nurse, and our attendance officer all reaching out to this, this parent to give support, offer support. What do you need? How can we help? Um, I also have on there the number of first legal notice and state meetings that were scheduled by our attendance officer, who's very diligent about monitoring our attendance for us. Um, and in addition to that, our social worker, amazing social worker, has offered to take parents and students to appointments so that they, you know, transportation and just removing the barriers. And we also have, we're very excited, um, we have a Check and Connect mentor that actually starts tomorrow. So we'll be referring a lot of these students that are showing up as chronically absent to her so that she can get her caseload built right away so that we can get that added level of support in the building to try and reduce that percentage. Thank you for mm -hmm. the explanation and, and the detail. And then the last question I have um, that relates to that piece is, um, have you determined at this, this point how that absentee rate is impacting your data? Not, not right now, not as of now, but we can act, we'll actually take a look at it. We can get it for you. Um, I'm sure, logically speaking, if you, if you are in attendance, the likelihood of the data actually rising, being better than what you've seen, um, is going to be great. I mean, it's going to be just that greater. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll take a look at that and get that back to you. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank Mr. you for your feedback. I just have one question. Sure. And it's in relation to the PSSA science for eighth grade. Having been an administrator at the high school and now in our K-8, do you see anything that needs to happen at the K-8 mm -hmm. level that would help build those skills and strengths up for when students reach high school. So I'd say more exposure, simply, simply put more exposure. Um, thus far, I mean, we many schools, I think, have it at grades four and eight. And we, we do, there are ways to kind of touch science, but not really get into it. And so I think we have to embed science into, into, our, into the experiences of students much more and earlier so that we, they actually have like a consistent experience moving forward. <laughs> There are some things that we're doing to kind of supplement. Um, we will be doing some uh, dissection. Uh, we did order a couple, you know, animals that we're going to dissect with certain students mm -hmm. to supplement um, to supplement the actual their, their actual educations and their exposure. We did we did you know make a huge investment in like microscopes and different things just to help our current science teachers really really you know provide something that's that's enriching. Um, but the other nice part about that is this. Um, Ms. Rivera, who is, is who is uh, who's running the freshman academy, is also a science teacher, mm -hmm. and so having to having those conversations with her 
to figure out how do we continue to build the experiences of students so that by the time they get to high school, they're taking, they, they can take upper level science and don't have to take like a, like an earth science. So we are trying to provide more experiences earlier and often. And so we've, um, we've actually uh, made a point to invest, you know, put a, a quite a, a nice chunk of money into our sciences this year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I just have one more. I'm sorry, Diane, just that I thought about that I didn't see and maybe I missed it. Do you know how many students um, have IEPs in your building or what percentage of your population? <clears throat> it's, I know it's a little more than a third. It's a little more than a third. I can get the exact number though. We have a high population of IEPs and also dual diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank Any you. other questions? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Felder and Mrs. Is it Mrs. White? White. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Mrs. White, I met you. This is your second year at McKinley. This is my first year. This is your McKinley. first. Okay, yes, these COVID years have me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I met you on your first day or first week. I came up to McKinley over my lunch break, and I, I just remember you. Yeah, remember you telling, you know, saying that um, you were just transferred from Jackson. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Hello, you probably I probably wouldn't have recognized you. So I, I, I like uh, the different programs you brought over to McKinley. Just Thank wanted you. to say that. And I'm, I'm so happy we're able to have the uh, school presentations again and board meetings in person again. Um, and I like the, uh, the family and uh, student and uh, community engagement that has been going on. Mm -hmm. But I did want to say that don't forget Please don't forget to embrace those Kurtz Avenue and <laughs> Newberry Street. I, oh, I just want to tell you, I was stopped in one week. I was stopped <laughs> twice, two different um, events where um, residents of the the neighborhood, because McKinley's a community school, yeah. and they they don't feel that they're being engaged anymore. Okay. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Um, you. Most of them are grandmothers now but they're taxpayers and they care about what's going on at McKinley. So I just want to make sure we're still embracing that neighborhood. So, Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. And Director Gloverman, I'm yes. glad you made, I'm glad you mentioned that because <laughs> me and Mr. Felder had a long conversation about that because yeah. I got a number of phone calls too. Mm -hmm. okay. but we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so I did, so I was working with some of the, some of the folks on the block, just connecting with them about some of their concerns, you know, regarding traffic, and trash and different things like that. And so we're looking for solutions. We did meet with the city to address, uh, to, to figure out a solution to address some of the traffic and sort of the gridlock that happens in the morning and in the afternoon and some of the incidences that have occurred. So uh, uh, the chief and I have met with the city. We're waiting for a follow-up meeting so that we can you know, figure out a, a, the best way to address it. But we're, we're open to different solutions. Um, parking is limited. It, mm -hmm. The blocks are a little tight. And we have a high population, we have a high student population and many, you know, many which families choose to drive their kids to school because that's efficient right. for them and right. safe. So we're, we're, we're working on it. And I just, you know, I, I will find a way to, to get, to, to get their feedback and embrace exactly. I mean, to get their feedback, to figure out exactly how they'd like to be included in, in, in McKinley. We're, listen, we're always happy to have extra folks in the building are people just assisting so right and I, yeah. I just wanted to say it's not just the issues they're they're asking about they want to be brought in for yeah they want to oh, be okay. included for the good stuff that's happening well, listen, at McKinley. Listen, come on in if, you, if you're <laughs> yeah. on this meeting they tonight, want they want you, you to let them in. know what's going on okay so, okay all right okay and my my other question is um when, when i'm looking at the cdt um well the common assessment data and then um the data driven decision making and all the bullets about um, you know what's going on to, to assist with the student achievement. How how is any of this being measured? So it'll be measured in the forthcoming tests. We won't know exactly the effect of that, but we won't know the exact effect until we have you know the other tests that are going to be occurring, the other the common and the interim assessments to know exactly where we are. Mm -hmm. But the data has shown there are specific grades and or areas that that need specific attention. So, you know, in in conjunction with IXL and our math intervention, the interventionists and literacy interventionists and the different things that we're doing, we're trying to 
we're trying to address all of those things at the same time and then trying to measure our success and then adjust at the very next time we receive data. Would you would you be able to tell one area that's working versus another that's not really working? Would you be, would you be able to tell that? Um, I think we would. I but we we need a little more data to do so to figure out what things are working and, and what are not. We do know that some of our students that were, you know, victims of COVID who, who received some learning loss, we try to concentrate a lot of our resources there. Um, they're around like our third and fourth graders. So we're trying to really focus there because fourth grade is a, is a testing year or third and fourth grade are testing years. So we're trying to really attack that. And then what we plan to do in the future, you know, once we address and support these students is, is really start to build it at, you know, at, at the K-1-2. Earlier. So that, yeah, build it earlier on so we don't run into these issues. So instead of, you know, trying to, to mitigate the issues, we're addressing them right up front. And then students are leaving with those critical skills in place. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Ms. White, yes, when Director Brown and I came up to the school, you weren't there, Principal Felder, but <laughs> We had concerns about the library. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. And is the library doing okay? So at the current moment in time, um, we are utilizing that space for um, different pullout groups of students. Once my, I'm trying to get more ambassadors on board, mm -hmm. which is what I had spoken to you about earlier, so that we can get some books um, cataloged better and get those out like on a mobile cart to students mm -hmm. so that we can still have the students can still have access to those books, but at this time, we haven't been able to do that yet. Yeah, because libraries are really important to the mm -hmm. kids in our building. So mm -hmm. that was our concern. And when yeah. we first got there and met you, I'm saying, is she really an assistant principal up here? She's so young <laughs> looking. So, but Thank you. yeah, but I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, did that uh, Dr. Mary too? But glad to hear though that you are utilizing. Yes. things to happen with yes, the library because yeah. mm -hmm. kids do need that aspect absolutely okay thank you thank you and the presentation I just one... was great thank you thank you mm -hmm. you have a question miss will okay sure my suggestion is just to reach out to martin library because they will send volunteers to help you catalog and organize your library they did it for us at lincoln charter this year i love that so thank you them. thank you for sharing that you're thank welcome you. now as an administrative team yes the question is for both of you. What do you see as your biggest success and what do you see as your biggest challenge? I would say our, so <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> so, our, so our greatest success, honestly, I think um, right now is shifting the culture and doing that by building relationships. Mm -hmm. I think that's been our greatest success, um, it, and it's been fun, you know what I mean, in doing so and, and, and doing a lot of this work. Biggest challenge would just be space. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of it. We are, we are very, we use it very cleverly, like we actually come <laughs> up with very clever ways to create space or utilize spaces. So we're managing, but we are, we're tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, please, please stand up. Please stand up. <laughs> yeah, we absolutely couldn't do any of this without you. So we appreciate you coming, taking your time to come out here tonight. Thank you all. It means a lot. Thank you for what. <laughs> And, and for our teachers, thank you for all that you do. We will continue to ask the tough questions. We will continue to challenge conventional thinking. And we know that every day you come into our building, you come with our students' best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of you who I have relationships and work with throughout the years. And there's some new faces, but to the old faces, don't leave too soon. <laughs> They're counting down, but just thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. Mm -hmm. yep.
We will now be moving on to, here we are here, Dr. Barry, superintendent's presentation. Good evening. And this is Dr. Barry, our family, you're free to go if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Watch your head. I don't want nobody to hit their head yeah. still going around that corner. <laughs> That was a great presentation. I love that. They're definitely yeah, they I love their PVAS. PVAS scores were great. Mm -hmm. The PVAS scores were great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Mary. <laughs> that's, all, that's all right. Just doesn't always work out for everybody at the same time. So. <laughs> okay. Good evening, everybody. The our report for this week is as follows: starting with our levels of transmission as suspected. We've done a lot of moving since last week. So we have every group in the medium section except for Lancaster County. So that was not the case last week. So that means that the cases are continuing to rise, which we talked about a little bit last week and we're saying that we had concerns about, and now the numbers are reflecting those concerns. So if you look at our numbers at the, across the top from September to November and compare them to December and January, you see a huge difference, which we also suspected and predicted before the holidays that the numbers would jump because of traveling and because of some of the different things that have gone on. Okay, so our YCEA attendance um, by date is before you. We started this in August and now we're into December and January, and we're averaging between um, 16 and 21 days. As you can see, the days are in parentheses and in, in the orange section. So for the month of December, from December 8th to January 18th, the numbers are there. We have a total, um, one of the highest, of course, is the high school because of how many teachers are there and how many staff are there. Um, um, one of the lowest is um, Bearcat Cyber, again, because of the number of teachers that are there versus the number of teachers that are at the other schools. But the, Barry, yes, um, with, with all these absences, what, what is the um, substitute rate? The substitute, the substitute rate is, is, is lower than we would like. I would like to see us filling anywhere from 97 to 99% of subs. We're probably more at a fill rate of 80, some odd, 88. Um, we've talked about some different um, ways to, to mitigate that problem. One of the ones that I'm still not off of yet is I would love to see us use two different companies. If one company can fill at 80% and one can fill at 20, then we have what we need. Unfortunately, the way our system is set up right now, we can only utilize one subservice. One subservice has to be the subservice that connects or talks to our frontline system. But frontline costs a lot of money. And so, you know, I think there's a way around that and it's just going to require some conversation and some outside the box thinking. But there are other sub companies um, besides the one that we have and we have been checking and talking to Attorney Ghetto uh, as well as talking with the sub services to see there is no allegiance to be with one company like 
there's no contract that says we can't be with someone else as well. But every sub company is not a good sub company. And some of them fill at much higher rates th than others. And some of them are much more costly than others. So that is one of the ways we're trying to solve the problem. But that problem is not unique to York City. In fact, it's a, it's a problem all over the county, the state, and I will even venture to say the nation. But we have done our part. We did raise our sub pay to be higher because we have more difficulty getting subs. But that still hasn't been attractive enough to fill at a rate higher than 86, 87. So, so when you talk about the, uh, you said frontline. So is that an automated? Frontline is the HR system that we that Automated. we utilize. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. But um I just remember years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you have to yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we now have a sub service. So that sub service does that for us. We don't have to pick up the phone and call anymore, which is nice. But like I told the sub service, a uh, 80 some odd percent fill rate for the for the price that we pay. I'm not going to say it's unacceptable because I know it's not necessarily anything that they're doing wrong except scarcity of people. Like they they just don't have the people to give us. But like I said, if you combine two services, you should be able to get what you need. We are doing a lot of class splits and they are royally costing us. They are extremely expensive, so. So when, when we look at the, this attendance rate, which you've been sharing with us since last year, that's just atrocious. Um, when, we, when we look at that, and we look at the struggle in getting subs, and sometimes if you have someone that's out more than one day, you know, um, this might be pie in the sky thinking, but is there any way to 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 look at data and say, is the impact to our academic performance related to this atrocious teacher? Uh, uh, I, I can tell you, it's definitely yeah. a factor. Yeah. Because if you add up all the days, they equal more than a school year. Exactly. So. You know, that right there speaks volumes. If a teacher is out of a class, if a teacher is out more than 10 days in a year, imagine the hours that that student is right. losing. Right. So it's definitely impacting negatively. I mean, that that's 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 definite. We don't have to <laughs> we don't have to look at data. Look to at it. Well, I said that out loud. Mm -hmm. To, to mm -hmm. say that that there's some crucial conversations that need to be wow. had, not just oh I'm going to stay. I, yeah. I mean they the conversations need to be had. You know when we look at you know what we pay in salary, what we offer in benefits, the you know all of the things that are happening, and um, in this district, and this is continuing to be an issue that um, is concerning gravely concerning that at the end of the day is affecting our student performance because if they're not here, the teachers' kids aren't getting what they need. And so, um, you know, it's a conversation that just has to be had and no more dancing around and making people feel comfortable and union issues and whatever the deal is. I mean, you got to call a spade a spade and this is the problem and it has to be addressed head on and it has to be talked about. Mm -hmm. So when I was a principal, I used to do a report where I looked at my staff to, to see how many, how many times my children had had a substitute within that year. And I broke out that data. And there were some cases in which kids had a sub 180 times, which is a whole school year. When you count art, music, and all like all those subjects, no. So, you know, that that that's yes. And disheartening more so because you know, a child has missed that much school, that many hours. 
you break that down into days and hours and and granted it's not one teacher out 180 times but if that if that child goes to math with another teacher goes to ELA with another teacher like the upper grades and they do switching or they go to gym art PE and all of those different subjects library they could potentially be missing a teacher multiple times in a week so I guess then the conversation becomes accountability and how do we hold them accountable and in most instances the only way you hold them accountable is by changing their contract when it comes right. out so um, duly noted and contracts will be changed correct um, I do have a question so the absentee days what are the subjects um, I know you had mentioned several subjects what subjects are being impacted the most? Because oh, I always I think, think of science. I and math. think it's all of them. I don't. I. I don't think. I think if you. I don't have the answer with data, but I can tell you across the board on Fridays and Mondays and every school across the district, there are there is compulsive attendance issues. And do we know what the barriers are? Like what? What's the number the number one reason? I know COVID still mental health. You, mental health mental health days mental health days that I, I believe that's, that's the number their, one is that built into no the, no that's what they're calling it like I needed a mental health day I uh, they get thirteen sick days a year okay so so and do we know we have a tally of who's been sick their time and. We, and if you continue to there are some people that for whatever reason and i don't i don't want to characterize everybody's situation the same because there are some folks that have legitimate illness that are out for legitimate reasons but there are also folks that if their toenail hurts or if they just don't you know have a headache or whatever they correct and and there are some folks that believe that their sick time is their time and they should be able to use it all every year. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to be sick. I don't want to use my sick time. I, I want to save it. I want to bank it. But and that's one of the reasons why we denied that sick bank. So yeah. So, so but there, because... but there are several, but there are several reasons. Some people, you know, but we, what we did take out of here, like these are not COVID days. Like these are not days, like because we 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 parsed that out. Yeah, early on. Because we wanted to make sure that that wasn't the cause. So these are days other than, and some of them are appointment days. I have an appointment, or I have two appointments, and I, I don't. I, I'm, there's no way I can come in. So. Hmm. So, and because I don't know the contracts, is is there a number of days where it's like, you no. need a doctor's note? Well, yes. Give There's language around holidays and um, there's language around days in a row. So many days in a row, you need a doctor's note. Um, but they're not usually in a row. They're usually... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this Friday, next out. Friday, and the following <laughs> Friday. Look at the verbiage on it. Right. I, I, uh, so it's yeah. a challenge, and yeah. this is these the, these are the folks that are in the teachers union, but the ESP union is not much better. Like yeah. that is a problem as well. And I'm glad that you I brought know. that up, Doctor Barry. Yeah. Excuse me, Miss Warren. I'm glad that you brought that up because that's a very serious concern in terms of the documentation and the tracking of our ESP people. Because what I do know, and I've talked with numerous people, and that was one of the things on my to-do list when we have a meeting, is to talk about how that's being counted. Because we have people who are apparently were using SPI time, and they had no SPI time. So if they're going to use time that they don't have, then we'll deduct that from their paycheck. Mm -hmm. So if you don't come to work, you're not going to get paid. Mm -hmm. And I would say that publicly, and that's why my mic is on. Because if you're not going to come to work, you're not going to get paid. And maybe there needs to be similar conversations and language in the teacher's contract, too. Because the bottom line is, our children continue to suffer. Now, when I retired from my job, I had three months of sick time. I was very rarely ever sick at work. 
And when I did use a sick time, it was to take my mom to a medical appointment. So I'm just going to get off of that because that's a touchy subject for me. I couldn't tell. <laughs> I, I, I just wonder, Dr. Barry, I know the majority of our teachers don't even live here in the city. And that's, that's irregardless of that. But I'm saying to myself, they're, the districts where their children go, and if a lot of those teachers are calling off at those districts, are they, they concerned are. about any of that? Or are they just, what they are, are your thoughts on that? I, you know, I don't know, but I do know that my kids complain about having subs a lot. They are all. So you're saying though, so you're saying our district is not, it's not an isolated problem. The other it's school, not an isolated the other school problem. districts are doing the same thing with the teachers. Well, what I don't it? know to what extent because I'm not yeah. collecting data, but there are a lot of subs in my kids' schools. Yeah. Wow. I wonder what it, what's wrong now that they just not want to be teachers. Well, ever anymore, since COVID, or? I think it's I think COVID magnified it. It was always an issue. Fridays and Mondays were always an issue. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but days before holidays were always an issue. Um Days after holidays were an issue. Well, isn't that in their clause that they have to work before and after? It it is, but paid? doctor's notes are like candy. So oh, that's true too. No, but no, 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 no. What I'm saying is the 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 um the contract reads that they have to have a doctor's note. Yeah. Well, you can go to urgent care and get a doctor's note very easily. True. You know. They don't ask any questions. They just give it to you. So. I just. Uh, but it is it is disheartening. It is difficult. It is hard. Yeah. It is a challenge. But I do think putting it in the forefront and talking about it and, and looking at it and, and troubleshooting it and saying we're not going to tolerate it. You know, I do think it will get better. Yeah, because of me and old. We we don't want to penalize good teachers for the bad ones. Correct. But but we've got to really look at this now because it's really getting down a hand here. When is your next contract up? We'll start ne negotiating next next year. Next year. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll still be around. It. <laughs> it seems like we just finished. I'll still be around. Oh good lord. Yeah. This time wow. again. Okay, so um, just a couple updates. At our last advisory meeting, there was a vote to change the meeting schedule from monthly to bi-monthly. So now that meeting is going to run every other month instead of every month. Might have something to do with a, a recovery exit, not sure. <laughs> there won't be a February meeting, but there will be a March meeting. And then after that, there'll be a May meeting. So that was a nice surprise. Um, the second hearing for the application for the master's charter um at master's academy charter school of york was held yesterday tuesday at William Penn senior high school and the board will vote on the status of this application at its regular meeting on wednesday february 15th our listen and learn dates that remain are before you we have one coming up on the 30th of january at Ham hannah penn we have a virtual one on the 27th of february and on the 27th of march we have one at the steam academy and they're all from 5 30 to 6 30. So our, Jan our remaining January um, half day schedule, early dismissal, and Friday, there's no school on the 27th for parent teacher conferences. And we have quite a few Bearcat shout outs today. So definitely want to shout out our wonderful board of school directors because January is National Board of School Directors Appreciation Month. We thank you all for all that you do. Thankless work, <laughs> but, appre but, but appreciated by us. <laughs> we, hope, uh, we hope you eat good. <laughs> Mr.
Mr. Little from the high school would like us to shout out Miss Togans, who was a math teacher at that high school, at the um, William Penn Senior High School. She took the lead in providing students an educational experience of, with robotics classes weekly. She also took the initiative, and that's a, a partnership with Ray Ames from Young Thinkers of York. She also took the initiative in helping to create a dual enrollment trigonometry course for the students to take advantage of high level math. So good job, Ms. Togans. And then um, I'd like to shout out the cabinet that was instrumental in that comprehensive audit of the Master's Charter Academy students review. Thank you all for your hard work and for shutting the room down. We appreciate you. <laughs> The Hannah Penn um, First 10 team participated in a First 10 webinar where they showcased their work on, on kindergarten centers and their daily community school initiatives. I happened to be on that webinar and they represented us well. Great job, Hannah Penn First 10 team. Mrs. Swipes, Ms. Schweitzer and Mrs. Swartz would like to give a bear cash shout out to the Davis staff. They both feel privileged to work with the Davis family from analyzing data to drive instruction to building relationships and loving on our students. They give 110% each day. They walk through the door. Your administrators are extremely proud of you. Ms. Michelle Morningstar is over at Bearcat Cyber for being a champion for her students by creating engaging lessons to bring them into the building to work despite our independent cyber platform. So she works to get students in so she can see them, she can put her eyes on them and she knows what's going on. Good job, Miss Morningstar. And our very own Mayor Dr. Fitch over there <laughs> and, the, and the Wellness Wednesday program for the excellent work with the students during the program. They were chosen by um, Christmas Addicts um, Martin Luther King Day of Service Planning Committee to receive the first Reverend Michael D. Jefferson Award, Living the Dream for 2003. Congratulations on your accomplishment. Wellness, Wellness Wednesday started out as a think tank, I believe, in Danielle's office, <laughs> and then it, it evolved into this huge thing. So there were a lot of people that were instrumental in that, but it kind of took off at the high school and grew these legs and was just an awesome experience for our high school kids. And many of you stopped by and were there to witness some of the things that were going on. We are hopeful to be able to keep continuing that because it was very well received. So, okay, that's still going to be the high school. Um, the next one is coming up. Yes, the Wellness Wednesdays will be continuing um, at the high school. We're going to meet to see, uh, since it has gotten so large, we're going to be meeting in the same area. Once you go into the high school, you'll go down um, to the basement. And then once you get off the elevator, you just make a right and just listen for the noise. And we'll be meeting and going from there. And it's going to be, the time has changed, though. It's going to be from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And the net, the first one, because this is going to be our kickoff meeting, because, again, just like Mr. Breland said, we're going to try to continue on what um, McKinley Magic has started with having their middle school students working with their younger stu school students. We're looking for, <clears throat> Ms. Ms. Orr, I'm going to say it right, seasoned Bearcats. Seasoned Seized, yes, seasoned senior Bearcats that would like to share their knowledge to our college and um, college graduates who then will then turn around and work with our high school students who then will turn around and work with our middle school students who then will turn around and work with our elementary school students. So it's a big circle where everyone is getting mentored. 
and really understanding what it means to be a bear cat. Yeah. And, and it's, what, what was the name again? Yes, Mr. Drayton, that Martin Luther King, he wanted to call older people elders. You know what I'm saying? Elders? That makes you sound like, no, no, no. That makes you sound like you're old, decrepit, and all that. I'm not an elder. What am I, Dr. Fitch? You are a seasoned senior. Thank you. Come on, elegant elders. And um, <laughs> January January 25th, January 25th, shameful plug, January 25th, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Come by Wellness Wednesdays at William Penn Senior High School. Ms. Wilkes, um, January 25th, 11 a.m. to 12 to noon, Wellness Wednesday. Thank you, Mr. Breland. Thank that you, Dr. Fitch. Any other questions for me? No other questions, no. but I, I'll be... I'll come through since the time has changed. I always had meetings at 10 o'clock. Yeah. But if there's no park, I'm going to keep it moving. I'll keep it moving because it's hard finding a park. If you're, if you're going, I, I I might be able to arrange a, a special parking space. Oh, it's just along. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know you're not supposed to do that, though. I don't know. And I'll never okay. carry enough change with me. So moving on, we're going to our public comment on agenda items only. Hearing none, we'll move to our items of initial concern, which we have none. Move to our committee reports, report items only, report of the Building and Grounds Committee. Good evening, all that are listening, Board Directors Administration. I don't have any updates unless Mr. Haynes does. Uh, I have no updates this evening either. Thank you, Mr. Haynes. That concludes. Thank you. Now we'll go down through our remaining report of personnel. Committee resignations, followed by our retirements, promotions within the ESP, involuntary ESP transfers, declination of job offers, updated information, And now we'll move down to our consent agenda. Board members to peruse these action items only before we take a vote. Director Breedman? Yes, ma'am. Can we pull 8P? 8P? Yes. P as in partner. Okay, P has been pulled. Any others? Are we going to do a roll? You're going to do a roll call vote or something? Do you need to abstain? Yeah. K and L. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What <laughs> Okay. One more quick extension. Okay. So we're, is it just because of that one name? Yeah. So we're going to just go into the sorry, executive session now. Well, we can leave all the other ones. Well, why don't we just wait until Fruitman to come back and have a conversation? If we're going to have a conversation, we just do that before we do anything, then we can approve everything together. Or if we have to table anything, we'll do it now. All right, the board will retire into executive session.
We only need the board members.
Okay. Yeah. I want to thank you all because we are on a personnel. We're in a executive session for a personnel matter. And at this time, we will move to vote for those items that were not pulled. I and I like to make a motion that we accept all items brought forth except for the items that were pulled. Items that were pulled. Second that. It's been first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Secretary, our next item. AP. AP. Huh? Go with the budget, please. Okay. So at first, we need a motion for the first person, Amy Keener. 8P? Oh, no, who said 8P? I did. Oh, sorry. An eight cup. Okay. okay, 8K. Someone pulled K and L. Who pulled K? The LIU budget? I they don't know. They need yeah. roll call. Okay. okay, they have to be pulled oh, for roll have... call. Oh, okay. Okay. So we need a motion to approve item 8K. So moved. It's been moved. Second. Second. And we need a roll call vote for each of those items. Okay. Yes. 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 Motion carries. Moving down to item. 8L, your county school of technology budget 2023 20, 24. Could we have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Madam Secretary, roll call vote. Yes. 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 Next in line is the session. Madam Secretary. 8P. Okay. Somebody's got to make a motion with just respect to the Yes. We would like to have a motion just with respect to Ms. Keener. Second. It's been moved and second. And Madam Secretary, I would like a roll call. Yeah. This just Ms. Keener. Yes. 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 Now we'd like to entertain a motion for Ms. Akil Hawkins, community responder. And can I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Moved by Madam Glover Brown, seconded by Madam Liggins. Oh, and Madam. Madam. And we need a roll call vote, please. No. 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 No.
Let me find our one. Okay. Got me confused tonight. Okay, now that brings us down to the report of our Chief Recovery Officer, Dr. Michael Thu. Thank you. And good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening. Since this is the first we've actually been officially together since the December 29th uh, event of getting out of uh, recovery, I just want to take this a minute to say thank you. What you have accomplished is fantastic. The fact that you were the first in the Commonwealth to stick to your guns, you followed several iterations of a recovery plan, you were true to what you had promised the taxpayers you would do, and most importantly, you supported the students all the way through. So I can't thank you enough. And to be honest with you, you make this position of CRO and now monitor very easy. So thank you very much for everything you've done. And the administration, the cabinet, and the teachers, and all the other support staff in the district, they were a big part of everything. And, you know, 10 years is a long time, but by sticking to everything, it worked. So thank you very, very much. And Dr. Thu, thank you as well. Thank well, you. You're you're more than welcome. Uh, the other quick thing I'd like to just share a bit of information. The State Department had communicated with us that there was a grant written by the Pennsylvania Special Olympics to start a unified champion uh, sports team. And they asked if York City would be interested in uh, participating. And it's for uh, a unified track and field and uh talking with dr barry and you know dr fitch especially and ms manning for the special education department all were in agreement so this is something that has to move rather quickly so we're going to start looking at it and uh, it would be for a track and field team made up of students with special needs and general education students that is different from the high school track and field team, but it is still a sanctioned PIAA team and that it is also sanctioned by Pennsylvania Special Olympics. So we'll have more information, but they will be paying for the coach. They will be paying for the uniforms, transportation to two and possibly three away meets. And they will also uh, train the coaches and help them out. And they will have a, actually the person who's assigned from uh, Pennsylvania Special Olympics is a York County resident. So she is very excited. And we're also very excited because York High is the home of Loretta Claiborne. And so one of our ideas is she has been talking with them like other schools are doing it, but not mine. So now we can say we are going to have her school. and. We're going to see how much we can involve Ms. Claiborne, too. But we'll bring you more information once we iron out all the details. We have a meeting tomorrow afternoon, but we have an MOU that uh, Mr. Gettle has approved and reviewed uh, outlining all the uh, uh, items for how you start. So we're very pleased with that. So that's all I have for tonight. So thank, thank you. you very much. Looking forward to it that happening. Report of our board representatives, Community Progress Council, Dr. Fitch. No report at this time, still waiting to get on the council. Thank you, sir. Lincoln Intermediate Unit, Ms. Cassandra Liggins. Thank you. Um, Ms. Altoff, could you pull up the attachment? And good evening again, all that are listening. Um, I was present at the January 3rd meeting for LIU as we um, disapproved their budget. Okay. Uh, and um, there are some board policies that were adopted 
and present it for review at that meeting. Okay. Our next meeting will be held February the 7th and I will be attending that meeting and bringing back updates. Does any board directors have questions or concerns? That concludes. Thank you, Madam Liggins. At this time, we'll be moving on to PSBA Legislative Advocacy Representative Report. Madam Kennedy. Thank you, President Brilliant. There's no report as our legislature is still in the election challenge process. So limbo. nothing has moved. They're in limbo. Thank you, Madam Kennedy. Your County School of Technology, Ms. Diane Glover-Brown. No report. We'll have our first meeting for the uh, new year next week. Thank you. Moving on, York Adams, York Adams Tax Bureau, Mr. Hain. Thank you, President Breland. And there is no report for the month of January. Thank you. Thank you. Dollars for Scholars, Ms. Kennedy. And I'm going to echo the same sentiments. The meeting, is, <laughs> the meeting is next week, so no report. Thank you. And York Joint LIU Authority, Madam Glover Brown. No report. Those, <laughs> those meetings are held every other month. And the last few months, they've been held on the same day as our board meeting. Thank you, Madam Glover Brown. And do we have any other public comment at this time? Hearing none, there's a list of items for distribution, board members. And with that being said, I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn. It's been moved. Any seconds? Again. Second.